Here's a flash revision guide on the conservation and dissipation of energy. And in this video, we'll be covering how energy is wasted in everyday systems, how to minimize these wastes, as well as the process of conduction and convection. So let's get into it. The conservation of energy tells us that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred between energy stores. This transfer could be a useful transfer, a storage of energy, or the dissipation of energy. To explain all three of these, we can use a phone as an example. A useful transfer is when you get a call and your phone vibrates. The energy is transferred from the chemical energy stores in the battery to the kinetic energy stores of the motor which turns and causes it to vibrate. A storage of energy is the way that energy is stored in the battery of the phone in its chemical energy stores. And the dissipation of energy is basically when energy is wasted as something that's not useful for the appliance. So when you use a phone, it gets slightly warmer. This is because energy is being dissipated from the chemical energy store of the battery to the thermal energy store of the phone. This is not something that's useful for the phone and it wastes the energy stored in the battery. Hence we say this is the dissipation of energy. So now let's look at reducing these unwanted wasted energy transfers. The dissipation of heat is something that we want to decrease as much as possible. This is because it means that object and appliances can transfer energy they have more usefully and work the way that they intended in a more efficient way. So as an example, let's look at a house. The heat that keeps your house warm costs money. So you want to prevent it from escaping outside as much as possible. This loss is mainly down to the energy transfers by heating where thermal energy stores of the house is dissipated to the thermal energy stores of the air surrounding it. There are four main ways to prevent this. The first is having cavity walls. This is when you use two separate walls on the outer layer of the house instead of one. In between the two layers you have an air gap which reduces the amount of energy that's transferred by conduction. Conduction is just a process where thermal energy is transferred through a material. So when a material is heated, the particle within it gains kinetic energy and vibrate more. This causes them to collide with neighboring particles and transfer the energy throughout the whole object. The higher the thermal conductivity of the material, the faster this process will occur. So if you want to prevent heat losses in the house, you want to use materials with a low thermal conductivity. Air has a very low thermal conductivity, so the air gap in the cavity wall is good at preventing energy losses by conduction. To reduce heat losses in these walls even more, you can fill the air gap with a foam which has an even lower thermal conductivity than air, which reduces the heat loss by conduction even more. And on top of that, they also reduce energy losses due to convection. Convection is the process where thermal energy is transferred through a liquid or gas where the particles are free to move. When a liquid or gas has an area that's warmer, it becomes less dense and starts to rise above the cooler regions. And this leads to a movement of the substance which spreads the heat energy throughout it. This movement is known as a convection current. So in between the cavity walls you have air which is a gas. So it can experience convection which can move the hot air near the inside of the house to the outside. By adding foam in the gap, you trap the air in little pockets and prevent them from moving. This stops the convection current from spreading the heat energy away. To reduce the heat losses even more, you can make the walls thicker to lower their overall thermal conductivity. The second way to reduce unwanted energy transfer is by installing loft insulation, which is made of materials with low conductivity. These reduce heat losses by conduction and also convection as they disrupt the convection current that moves the heat around the house. The third example is installing double glazed windows. These work similarly to cavity walls as they are made out of two sheets of glass instead of one and have a layer of trapped gas in between. This prevents heat losses due to conduction and convection. The fourth example is installing draft excluders in doors and windows. These are strips of insulating materials like rubber which are fixed to the edges of doors and windows to fill the gaps. This reduces hot air from escaping and minimizes energy loss by convection. Another way to reduce unwanted energy changes is by minimizing frictional forces in moving objects. Let's consider a bicycle for example. The bicycle has a chain that moves over sprockets when ridden. This movement leads to friction between the chain links and the sprockets, causing some of the kinetic energy of the chain's movement to be converted into thermal energy. 
So instead of fully being transferred usefully to the kinetic energy stores of the wheels to propel the bike forward, some of the energy is wasted. To minimize this energy loss, you can lubricate the chain with oil, reducing the friction and allowing smoother movement over the sprockets. And that's it for that topic guys. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.